Hey guys, Danny Johnson here, and today we're going to be looking at the McLeod RXT Twin Disc Clutch. So I bought this one with the matching aluminum flywheel, and that's all going to be important as you'll see later in the video. And so uh, here's the part number on this one. This is for a 2004 SVT Cobra 8-bolt crank. Uh, so the flywheel is going to be 8-bolt, and so it's the 633-5807M. Uh, so that's the model number that we're looking at today. It's going to be for a 26 spline input shaft, and so I'll show that later in the video too, what that means. So if you're new to all this, uh, this video uh, will be pretty helpful. You'll notice on the diaphragm fingers there's some numbers written on there, and that's just that part number again. Uh, so that's what that is. And you'll also notice a blue stripe on the side. So we'll go over what all this is. It comes to you basically assembled, and so we're going to disassemble it. We're going to follow the instructions here, and then uh, when it's disassembled, that's when you would put it on the car. We're going to reassemble it and do it side by side with a single disc clutch. Here's the input shaft alignment tool. You'll notice 26 teeth on that, 26 spline, as we'll see a little bit later. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and get started with this. So this is what it looks like here. Uh, again, I have the aluminum flywheel that I bought from McLeod. It came as one kit. They also offer a light and steel flywheel, so it just depends on the model you get. Now looking down through here, you can see where that input shaft from your, your transmission would go. Again, 26 splines on this one. And you also may notice right ahead the alignment marks. So just because it's uh, marked, that's how it's clocked. It says right on the installation instructions, all assemblies should be balanced to the flywheel you are replacing. The twin disc power pack assemblies are not pre-balanced from the factory. And then uh, allow 1,200 shift cycles for breaking in before hard driving. And I believe what they had also said is that when you do take it to be balanced, the balancing has to be done on the flywheel, not on the pressure plate or anywhere else, or it will void the warranty. And so I'll show you later in the video where the flywheel is balanced and how that looks. You'll notice the big gap here. Um, that has to line up in that specific area. You can imagine if it was clocked wrong and bolted down, you'd be smashing uh, some of these straps and other components. So uh, pretty meaty here. Something you'll notice too, the diaphragm fingers stick up above the rim. When it is torqued down on the pressure plate, those will suck down. Uh, you'll notice that as you're putting it on the car, and then uh, it will be a little bit lower. So again, that lowers down as you tighten those uh, pressure plates. So you don't measure this right now, but when it's on the car, we're going to put a straight edge across it to make sure that those diaphragm fingers are collapsed. You're going to need a one half inch and a 14 millimeter socket in order to disassemble this. And so we're going to go ahead and start doing this. I decided to get a bunch of Ziploc bags and label everything. It's probably not too important on the pressure plate nuts because it's just the nut, the wash, lock washer, and the regular washer, but it is important with shims on the other pieces. So my recommendation is to put all of the hardware in individual labeled bags. So I'm going to take this mark here and say bolt 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And uh, so basically that's how I'm going to count this. So you could do it however you want. So I'm going to rotate the flywheel and I'm going to use the alignment mark as basically the center line. I'm going to go clockwise and go ahead and take out these. Now I'm also going to take them off in opposite directions. Um, you know, the crisscross star pattern. I'll be using a 14 millimeter socket for this. It really shouldn't matter the order you take them off, but um, torquing them down, you want to go in the star pattern across from itself. So we're going to go ahead and just use that same method here. This one was even on light enough. Uh, that you'll notice it uh, just basically came off hand tight because it, again it's not assembled to go on the car yet so we're going to go ahead and remove this nut here and right under it you'll notice there is a crush washer so the crush washer has a little slit in it okay so that's the one that goes on next and then under that we have this gold color washer as well so that's going to be the orientation for all these again I kind of went crisscross and removed them in a star pattern even though that really shouldn't matter for removing it but uh, that's just what I wanted to do okay so again here's what you have for the pressure plate okay at least the top part of the pressure plate and these are studs that are coming out from the flywheel and um, they have the little uh, hex on the top so you can take those out if you wanted to but with all of these six removed 
we're going to go ahead and lift the pressure plate off of the rest of uh, the arrangement here. Okay, and we're going to flip this upside down and gently put it down over here. You don't want to touch any of that surface area. You want to keep it clean of grease and everything. Okay, so now you'll notice the first disc that we come up says top. And so this is the top disc and it also happens to be the, uh, the top side. And so just so you know that that's right too, again, don't touch any of the surface area or get it dirty. You'll see flywheel side is what it says on the back here. So this is the top disc, that's the flywheel side, and so this is the pressure plate side. So again, this is how it would go on. So we're just basically gonna unstack this and show you. Next we have our floater plate that acts like another pressure plate and it has its nuts with the lock washers on that piece. Now with them tightened down, they were down pretty tight. What it's gonna tell us when it's on the car, okay, and we're checking this when it's on the car, but I'm gonna show you what we're doing is we're taking basically our uh, 20 thousandths here and making sure that uh, it can fit in between that disc. If you have more than 25 thousandths, then uh, you're gonna have to rearrange it somehow, okay, with different shims and washers. And notice we have our paint mark here, and notice how that strap is on the bottom of our uh, floating disc here. You don't wanna put it on upside down when you reassemble it. Okay, again, um, we're putting all this in bags. These will now float right off, and so we're gonna go ahead and take these, and even though these ones really shouldn't matter, we're just keeping them exactly how they came to us. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And this one required a, uh, this is the half inch socket. And I also used a larger half inch drive because they had this one torqued down pretty tight. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, break these ones loose. And we're gonna keep all of this hardware in its own bags too. So we have the pressure plate bolts, which were one through six, and now we have what we're gonna call our floater uh, ring ones. And there's three of those. So I named this one floater number one. And so, as you'll see here, this is gonna be the nut on the top and a crush washer right below it. We're gonna take those off floater one, two, and three. And now as we lift this off on our floater ring, okay, this is, notice this is how you could get this upside down. You want these tabs right here to be uh, the one that touched the flywheels. You can see if I inverted it, you could put it on backwards and you should not, but I'm just saying it's possible to put it on backwards. So you wanna keep that orientation correct. So that's what they mean by those straps being the flywheel side. Okay, next we're gonna come in and take off our second disc. Okay, so this one is gonna say it's the bottom. Okay, so this is the bottom disc. However, don't think that's the bottom of the disc. This is the flywheel side here. Okay, so it's the second disc and, or the bottom disc, but uh, you want the flywheel side facing the flywheel. Now notice that where the floater straps were, where we take that off, there are now shims as well as another one of the stands, as it's called, or the bigger spacer. Okay, and there were actually two of these, little tiny shims, as you see, that came apart here. So you had two shims and a spacer. And they might have it set up differently however they needed to from the factory but just wanted to show you what that looks like. And we're keeping that in our floater bag again, just keeping everything separate. So this is gonna be floater number one is how we clocked this one. And so we're gonna go ahead and put this in the bag. Okay, floater number two is the same thing. We have the spacer with the two shims on top. And I've seen other people who had these, they gave them extra shims. I didn't see any extra shims with mine, but this is how it came out. You'll also notice that under the pressure plate studs, there are also tiny shims here on the bottom. There were two of them. So you've got to really watch out for this hardware and make sure it does not fall off as you're disassembling this and then uh, putting it back together when it gets to the car. So now you'll notice I have eight holes for the eight bolt crankshaft on the Cobra. So that's really important. If you have a Mustang GT2 valve, unless it had the Windsor engine from 99 and 2000 and half year model in 01, you might not have, 
you might have an 8 bolt uh, crank for that one, but most of the GTs with the Romeo engines, the two valves had 6 bolt cranks. Okay, now this flywheel was made in the USA and it looks very similar to the stock Cobra one. You can see here where these studs are coming through the back. And something I wanted to point out, because we're going to compare this side by side by a Terminator flywheel, are these studs and how they compare. On a Terminator flywheel, you can see they have holes that are drilled into this, or at least divots that have been drilled out, and that's how they balance the flywheel. McLeod recommends that you take this new flywheel and have it balanced. And so the way they do it is they spin it and they put divots in it to balance it out. So here's a Terminator stock flywheel, and here's our new one uh, from McLeod. So we're going to go ahead and measure this, and you'll see that it came in at basically 14 and a quarter uh, it was the measurement we got. So there's 14 and a quarter. Coming over to measure the new flywheel, we are also at 14 and a quarter, so it's the same size and diameter. Okay, now you'll notice on the Terminator you have this ring, a little spacer ring here. So the flywheels they used, uh, they have Ford partner numbers on them. Uh, I think they were outsourced through Fidanza or something like that, but uh, as we put these uh, side by side, you'll also see that uh, one's a little bit taller than the other. The factory one on the right sits a little bit higher and some of this might not matter when it's all assembled and some of this might be different measurements when it's on the car. So don't take these measurements uh, exactly. You know, we even have a cardboard down that we might be stabbing into, but we're just giving you an idea here as we zero out our micrometer and get an idea of the comparison of these two flywheels and what they look like. So our new flywheel is coming in at about 10.26 millimeters from the uh, mounting surface down. And so if we look at the stock Terminator one, of course, there would be a gap there. And so the gap's there because we're missing the ring that uh, comes on the Terminator. So we're going to go ahead and throw this one in here. And uh, I even had to slide it a little bit to get a good reading on it. So the accuracy, again, is not going to be completely perfect here. But uh, we're just getting a close idea and measuring surfaces and all that will come into play. But basically we're at 12 uh, millimeters here. It's a little bit over 12 millimeters. Okay, next we're gonna look at something that might surprise you. When you're looking at a twin disc clutch, it's actually gonna be a smaller area because there's two discs, all right? So if we look here on the flywheel, the actual usable surface area, is 50 millimeters, okay, almost 51. You can see where that comes in on the Terminator, and so we're gonna have to bring this up from 50 to 61, somewhere around there, okay? So it is a larger area, and that's what a twin disc clutch is gonna do, is actually bring it in closer, which is better for rotational mass and everything. So as you see here on the stock uh, Terminator, we had one of these rivets that had actually come loose. And you can see where it's now bowing on that section of the, uh, the disc that you insert. Because it's an aluminum flywheel. Aluminum is not the material you want, so it has a hardened steel section. Now what you'll also notice on these flywheels is that they balance them by drilling out pieces of them. Okay, Drilling into the material. That's how you balance a flywheel. So the stock one has some drill marks where it's been balanced. The other one that came from McLeod does not. So they do not come balanced. That's uh, another thing that you can pay them to do. Um, but if you received it in, then you can take it and have it balanced, and that's highly recommended by McLeod. So you'll notice that the factory flywheel has dowel pins for the pressure plate to line up on, and then it has the holes for the pressure plate to bolt into. In this case, you have a bigger area here, and you have the smaller and the larger stud so your stock flywheel will not have those provisions or that area. So here's our stock clutch disc from a Terminator. This is Vallejo is the brand that they use from Ford, but you'll see Ford and Vallejo on this. So you'll notice as we set the disc in, we're going to come in and get a measurement. And you notice as well that the material on this is an organic one, so the entire disc is all the same material with no gaps. And here we are coming in about 50 millimeters. Uh, so basically it fits onto that, that disc area. Now as we come in and look at our new clutch disc here, a few things stick out. One, this is a ceramic material, so you'll notice it's that uh, lighter brown color. 
okay it sits down in here and of course it's a smaller area but with two discs you have more surface area so by comparison we're going down from 50 to about 45 millimeters in our overall width of how big these pads are and you'll notice the pads are also smaller with gaps in between them now much like the other disc this has the material on both sides of the disc as well just not as uh, much of an area there that's touching now something that's very important with this clutch that we're buying is we bought one that's 26 splines so what that means is the input shaft or this piece right here that comes from the transmission has to have the 26 teeth on it so we're going to be replacing this and upgrading it to a 26 spline this one here has 10 from the factory so you have 10 teeth basically so now as we're looking at this uh, you can see the difference on the alignment tool that's what the input shaft looks like that we just saw and there are 10 teeth in the Terminator one so same with the Mustang GT the Mach 1 the T45 the TR3650 okay the Mustangs for this era new edge all came with 10 spline input shafts so here's a 26 spline one you have more surface area where it's grabbing in 26 places instead of 10 and it's usually a stronger shaft too and so um, that's really important when you're getting this clutch uh, so again make sure you're getting the right flywheel for your application the eight bolt cranks would be on the SVT Cobras the Mach 1's that were the five speed cars the autos had a six bolt crank the 99 through 2001 and a half GTs with Windsor engines would have eight bolt but I don't know if it's the same pattern okay so we're gonna reassemble this we've got our shims on the bottom we have what's called the stand here that comes down over here we have another stand with shims on the top and that one's for a floater ring so we're gonna go ahead and bring our flywheel disc on now again this is gonna be flywheel side and it's gonna be the bottom disc so make sure it says bottom as this goes in you need to make sure that it is properly centered because it can almost contact the washers and those stands if you see so that's gonna be a, a challenge when it's going onto the car because it wants to sag down okay we're gonna bring in our uh, floater ring here so notice again how those straps are on the bottom side on the flywheel side okay as we're lining this up don't put it on upside down that's why those uh, paint marks are there so that you know that you're putting it on the right way okay so check the video description for putting it actually on the car this is just reassembly showing you the process because on the car you'd need the alignment tool you would need to make sure that that disc isn't floating around okay but the next step here would be putting on our uh, floater plate and when it's torqued down to 25 foot pounds you would have to make sure that you don't have any more clearance than 0.025 of an inch and no less than 0.020 so you're gonna take your feeler gauge when it's installed on the car and make sure that the clearance is correct if it's over 0.025 it'll push against the top disc and you won't get a clutch release and if it's under 0.020 it will push against the bottom disc and you won't get a release so again make sure that that strap is in this orientation not upside down the paint marks line up and you should be able to spin uh, this lower disc and it should have some wobble to it and that's okay okay next we're gonna bring in the top disc okay so flywheel side is gonna be pointed down and it says top for being the top disc okay we're gonna go ahead and put this one down and this is where you'd also want to bring in your alignment tool and it'd be good to put it in and make sure you're getting both discs and then what they want you to do is uh, give it a a little bit of a rotation and so by rotating it with the clutch alignment tool in here you'll be able to watch both of those discs spin at the same time so you know that it's aligned and that'll help you when it's time to put the transmission back in you want these discs to be lined up so again when it's going on the car you want to give it a turn so that they're both lined up okay so you would put on your washer you'd put on the lock washer next and then finally the nut and that's going to torque down to 35 foot pounds remember you are not using Loctite on this and you're going in the crisscross pattern just every nut across from itself and again check the video description I'll have a full install when it's actually going on the car as well so again comparing it to the stock clutch a lot easier you got the flywheel the clutch disc and pressure plate and torquing them down to spec 
And so that's basically the orientation of the twin disc versus the stock single disc clutch. So please check the video description. I have other videos coming on this and uh, I'll keep adding them to the description in a playlist as I continue to build them. Uh, you'll see a lot on the diaphragm fingers and the pivot ball stud. There's a lot of other stuff to know when you're installing one of these. And uh, so with a twin disc, just keep in mind, it's actually not going to be harder than a single disc. So there's a misconception that it must be a stiffer clutch and all that, but it has the same 0.044 to 0.045 is all you need to depress those uh, clutch fingers for it to disengage. And so uh, it really doesn't have much of a, a stiffer pedal feel and you have different materials like the ceramics and everything that might be a, a little bit grumpy until they're warmed up. But So hopefully you enjoyed seeing how this is all put together. It was interesting to see that with a twin disc you actually have a smaller clutch basically but there's just two discs. And so that also helps with you know spinning and centrifugal force and inertia and all that. Uh, the bigger clutches is how you used to be able to get more bite on your clutch, more holding clamping force is just going wider, but the more towards the edges of the flywheel you get and the bigger it is, uh, the harder it is to spin and, and balance and everything like that. So the twin disc is really a nice setup and we'll continue with the, the install videos and everything. So if you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe and make sure you turn on the, the notification bell so you don't miss out on any new videos. And as always, thanks for watching.